Hey guys, Average Joe here, and I'm back with a troubleshooting video for you. It has nothing to do with my discs. It has everything to do with this component. And it's because this is a very critical component of all of your Select Tech dumbbells. Doesn't make a difference if you have the 552 Series 1, the Series 2, or the 1090. They all, as you can see, have this same assembly. And the assembly relies on a locking mechanism, as well as two springs and two ball bearings that give people grief uh, when they're uh, using these sets and running into problems where their dial won't turn or their dial turns when it shouldn't be able to turn. Uh, so let's take a look at this mechanism and some of the uh, potential problems that you can run into with it and also ways that you can make it easier to assemble and disassemble your dumbbells should you need to without the ball bearings and springs going all over the place. So first, an understanding of how this works. What you have is a metal plate, a plastic assembly, two springs and two ball bearings and on this plastic assembly a locking mechanism and what happens is when you're using your dial when you're rotating this dial it is rotating this assembly and when your dumbbell is in the base when it's in the base and uh, you're selecting weights what happens is the base depresses this button it pushes it in because the weight of the dumbbell pushes the button in when it does it withdraws this pin it's a locking pin you can see there now that locking pin is what locks this plate from rotating okay so when you put your your dumbbells in the base the pin is withdrawn and this is free to rotate which means you can change your weights your the, the amount of weight on your dumbbell now when you lift your dumbbell from the base to use it in your workout the button is is then released and this pin as you can see comes out and it locks into the plate and it keeps it from rotating when you're using your weights that's how uh, Bowflex designed this to not accidentally rotate while you're working out okay a couple of things about this one it's a plastic component it sometimes breaks I'll be making uh, this summer a metal version of both the button and the pin for any of you interested in upgrading these to something uh, a little more sturdy but should this pin break it will not be able to prevent this from rotating it'll just rotate freely so you first can check to see if this pin if your if your assembly is rotating freely when your dumbbell is out of the base the first thing I would check is to see if this pin is either broken off and you can do that when you look here you can see it there but if it's broken off it would look empty like this because the pin would basically be missing that would tell you that you probably need to replace at a minimum this pin and that requires opening this backside two Allen screws and taking out these components to replace them. Now, the other thing that can happen is this can get stuck, meaning the button either gets stuck in the closed position or in the open position. And what I tell people is reach your finger in here while the dumbbell is assembled. Okay, it's let's take the 552 for example. You can reach your finger in here and depress that pin and you can see freely rotates now when I release it cannot rotate so you can actually check for yourself 
to see if the pin is jammed, just kind of flick it with your finger and see if you can get it to free up. If it is moving freely, then it may be that the pin itself has sheared off and you need to replace that pin. Okay, so the other, uh, that, that by the way is all to do with the rotation of your dial and the uh, you know um, safety of using this without the weights accidentally slipping out unrelated to the discs you know it's that's the other way they can slip out of your dumbbell assembly so the next thing I wanted to talk about is the springs and the ball bearings now for those of you who have taken these assemblies apart like I have a uh, you know, a million times, you know that the two springs go into pockets on this plastic. You can actually see them there. And then you you place your ball bearings on top of the springs, as you can see there. And then you have to carefully put your plate in under this plastic but over the ball bearings so I come in and I carefully position this over the ball bearings and what you're looking for and the challenge here and I'll show you in a second you're looking you can actually see the ball bearing right there and you can see the ball bearing right there you're looking for these little holes to be positioned on the ball bearings with the shaft aligned for both components, this component and the other component, okay? Um, once you've done that, you need to always make sure you're holding this firmly when you pick it up. If you don't, what's going to happen is the ball bearings are going to come loose again. So whenever I'm picking this up from any surface, you'll always see me hold it with one thumb or two, applying pressure downward on the plate like that in order to keep those ball bearings from moving so that when I'm putting together the assembly I can put it together and not have to worry about losing the ball bearings again now same thing taking it off you've seen me in previous videos grab it with my fingers press down take it off and your ball bearings are still fine now there's a couple tricks you can use when dealing with this component one is tape you'll probably have seen people have mentioned taping it you can do that and basically while this assembly while it's still on your dumbbell okay so you've taken off your discs let's put these back on for a moment so you've taken off your discs and you have this assembly. You can take a piece of tape, tape it down, take another piece, tape it down, and now you can take this off and the ball bearings aren't gonna go anywhere. It's actually a slick little uh, method that if you have tape handy, great, uh, you know, that problem solved. When you put this back on, just take your tape back off and put your disc pack back on the shaft. Okay. So that's one method. The other method, which I like, is when you're assembling this component, you can use grease to keep these components from moving around. It doesn't require a lot of grease, just a dab. And what I do is dip the spring a little bit. Now put your spring into its pocket. Spring. You can do one or both sides of the spring. I'm just going to show you this way, but you can do any way that works for you. Now that grease is going to act like 
a, uh, not an adhesive, but a goo that will keep these springs from falling out of this component. Same thing with the ball bearings. You can actually put the ball bearing into a little grease. Sit the ball bearing onto the spring. And now your ball bearings are going to be uh, stuck, if you will, to the springs. They're not going anywhere. Now you can see here, I can move this component and the ball bearings are not falling off everywhere. And I can put in my plate. You can see it is now properly secured on the ball bearings. And once again, slide my assembly down onto the shaft and put my discs on. And put my final dial on and then secure it with bolt. So, hopefully now you won't have trouble dealing with these ball bearings. They're very important when you're using this dial. The reason you hear the click, click, click as you go through the numbers, um, that is because the ball bearing acts as a stop, a positive stop. You can hear it. That's the ball bearing acting as a positive stop at each one of these increments. So it's an important part of the uh, assembly. And uh, hopefully now you can deal with the ball bearings and springs more effectively and also troubleshoot your uh, select tech should you have any problems with uh, the dial moving when it shouldn't or uh, binding when it should move. And uh, if you have any questions, leave a comment below and I will try to answer it uh, as soon as I'm able to. Um, thank you for watching.